and then your uncle played and your granddad's brothers played yeah. and like your whole family yeah. basically of footballers yeah. which is pretty crazy because we often hear i mean for instance your dad was a footballer mel's we often hear people whose brothers are players but your brother was a player your dad was your granddad was you've got so many family members that played football yeah yeah it really is it's, it's something you don't see very often something of course i'm really proud of coming from that family and and being able to keep that going, being a, a football player myself, so it's obviously great. Right, let's get an understanding. So you're an Icelandic international. At the moment, 21 caps, am I right in saying yeah. that? What other family members have played for Iceland? Yeah. And give us an idea of how many caps. Have you got the most caps right. in the no, family? No, no, I'm not even close. Not even close? No. So uh, my dad only has one game. Uh, his brother has... Hang on, who was that against? Was it a good game or not? Who did he no, play? No, it was probably just a friendly game. <laughs> <laughs> no, he played mostly, most of his career in uh, in Iceland. Uh, but his brother played abroad for a long time. Uh, for example, played for Stoke City. It's the, exactly the same name as me, Stefan Tordarsen. Uh He has around 10 caps, I think. Then my grandfather has two brothers. One of them has... I think 70 caps oh, wow. Wow. the other one has around 50 and uh, their father my great-grandfather he he was one of the first players to play for the Icelandic national team and he back in that time they never played so he has maybe 15 to 20 games and 10 goals or something like that so he, he was the goal scorer of the family and so he was one of the most famous families to have ever played for Iceland yeah, there are, there are a couple of them uh, from Iceland, but yeah, I would absolutely say uh, if you're from Iceland, you and you follow football, you know uh, you know this this family. Do you feel pressure being part of that dynasty? Or no, not really. Privileged, yeah. I would say. Uh, proud, uh, but there's there's no pressure from within the family. Everybody's really supportive, and for there's of course a lot of knowledge. And you want to make them proud, and sometimes they can be. It can be tough to make. Uh, they want you to do well, don't they? Yeah, they yeah, really but, do. They really yeah. do. And uh, as I said, it can be tough to make some of them proud. They are some of them very old school. Were, were you even born when your uncle was at Stoke? Yeah, I was. I think so. But, but, but you wouldn't but have. I have to go. You wouldn't to, have been. I don't um, remember him. No. Playing. Uh, I just. I just remember him playing when he was playing in, in Sweden. So he got promoted at Stoke. I'm sure he was part of a promotion yeah. early 2000s. Yeah, he was playing around that. Yeah, he I think played two seasons uh, in Stoke. But he's been all around in Germany, Norway, Sweden, and yeah, England. So the family member that you have with the most Iceland caps has 70 or yeah, something so, like that. Yeah. You're 25 years old. You've already got 21. So you've got a good chance yeah. of being the family member with the most caps. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That should be the aim. You've captained Iceland as well. You even played against England before the Euros. You beat England at Wembley. I mean, you've achieved some pretty cool things for your country already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's something, of course, I'm really proud of. The number one thing I feel being a footballer is playing for your country and representing the whole nation uh, as a football player. And, for example, that game against England, I know it was just uh, friendly maybe for those for the English players, but for us coming to Wembley, where England have just lost four or five games over the last ten years, it's absolutely outstanding and, and a huge, huge uh, day for us. It's not the only time Iceland have beaten England either. Happened in Euro 2016, very famously. And I think I read somewhere that there was like eight or nine percent of the whole population of Iceland was in France yeah. for that Euro tournament. Just talk to us about how much... Euro 2016 gripped Iceland and gripped you as a, as a young lad yeah. coming through? No, absolutely. It was best summer ever. It was, uh, everybody was involved, you know, everybody stopped working when the game was on. You just, you just have to work two more hours after when the game's finished. And uh, <laughs> it was, it was brilliant. Everybody's so proud of the team and they were, for us young footballers at that time, they were stars, absolutely. Well, you were about 16, 17 at that time. I mean, how far off were you to being around that sort of level? Not close. No. Not close at all at the time. I was yeah, 17, 18 at the time. 
they went to the Euros. Uh, so no, nowhere close. I was just playing for my Icelandic uh, hometown club at that at that point. And your hometown club is Akranes, is that right? Yeah. So so you, glad you said the name. Well, <laughs> you mentioned that Todd Arsen's poss possibly the most famous football family to come out of Iceland. Akranes is perhaps the most famous town to produce Icelandic footballers. The amount of football players that have come from Akranes, which is a little bit further north from Reykjavik, is yeah. that right? Yeah, that's right. It's cr incredible the amount of players that you've produced from it's, that town. It's unbelievable. Uh, for example, Preston North End has had three players, three Icelandic players, all from that town. Uh, <laughs> well, you researched that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I know them. I know both he of them. Oh, okay. of like, <laughs> one of them is a really good friend to my dad, and the other one played also with my dad and also good friends. And so it's not that hard to, to know that. So did you speak to them before coming to North End and they told no. you what it, how good it was? No, not really. Uh, my dad spoke to one of them, but uh, I didn't... Uh, didn't do that. I, I need to get an understanding because to me, playing in Iceland, it's Baltic. Mm. I, I mean, what is it like in terms of conditions? Mm. Is it quite difficult to, to play because of the conditions over there? Yeah, winter time, of course, you can't play outside. Uh, you can if you have like artificial grass, but in the winter time, it gets so cold and it's so windy and snowy. So, what's so cold to, towards like? With five degrees, it's Baltic over it. We're speaking minus 10, 15 degrees Celsius. And that's common quite quite a lot. Yeah. And it's dark a lot of the time. Yeah. Too. yeah. Like January, it's, you get like, I don't know, one hour, two hours of like proper light. But in the summertime, you you can go golfing at midnight. and <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's ups and downs with it. But yeah, playing in Iceland, uh, it was, I think it, creates creates a certain mentality creates a certain mindset you go into uh, as I said in some interviews like us Icelandic football players we we know that being a football player is not given to you we know you really have to work hard for the things and and I know we're a nation of 350,000 and uh, playing in the championship is not it's not something everybody can do, so of course I'm really proud and honoured. It is a big achievement. I mean, I, yeah. you mentioned about some of the, the former North End players from Iceland. I've scribbled a few down here. I mean, it's your turn to say yeah, the names here we go. now. So some of these names I've got here. I mean, how big are these sort of characters in your country? Good Johnson, yeah. Horidason, yeah. Helgerson, Gunnarsson, mm -hmm. Bergson. I mean, these are all household names in English football. Yeah. I mean, are they massive stars over there? Yeah, they are. They really are. In the football world, they are massive stars. Uh, for example, Herman Reiderson, he everybody knows who he is. He's an uh, absolute lunatic, absolute by the lunatic. way. Yeah. Biggest left back ever. Absolute well. lunatic. I <laughs> love <laughs> Herman Reiderson. You can just see his mentality and how he got through his career of playing football. It was not because he was the best football player with, with the ball, but it was that mentality. I'm not saying he was, he, was, he was a good player. I'm not saying that. You have to be a good player to play that many games in the Premier League and everything. But his main thing was his mindset. Like, he went into every game. Herminator, is that what yeah, you call Herminator, him? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can ask everybody who... who uh, play with him everybody's going to say he's an absolute lunatic yeah he's got that look in his eyes where you just know oh, yeah. you're not sure what... so, so i've listed all them them names there from players that have succeeded over here which you're hoping to do yeah did you come across any of them do it they help any mm -hmm. of the next generation to say you can maybe go and have yeah. a career there uh i did johnson uh, who played for chelsea obviously in barcelona and everybody he what a player. yeah uh, amazing <laughs> player. amazing player i can tell you he he was at one point uh, my under-21 national team coach, uh, assistant coach. And when he came in and started talking, you were just all the years. You just listened and listened, tried to take everything in. And he even joined in a couple of times, like the day after a game, uh, still training. Still, he's so good. <laughs> he's so good. Like, it's unbelievable. He never missed the ball. And he was, how old is he now? 40-something. <laughs> For his ability and... So I'm very lucky to be, yeah, been... Did he give you some advice? Yeah, absolutely. When when he was my coach in 21s, I was transitioning from being an attacker to a midfielder. And he kind of did that also later in his years, going from 
uh, attack to midfield and he gave me some very good advice that I still keep uh, keep with me. Can you tell us all that? Yeah, it's just mainly not like forgetting what being a striker and an attacker is, still getting into the box and still making those runs because you, from being an ex-forward, you know those runs and you know where you should position yourself in the in the box. So that's one of the main things. Like, don't forget how it was being an attacker and don't only think about now playing in the left. Neil Mellor scored. Preston take the lead. And that's exactly what it means to Neil Mellor to score in the West Lancashire derby.